today we are going to talk about another type of transformation which is called a reflection we define a reflection as a transformation in which a figure is reflected over the reflection line the reflection line in this course is going to be mainly x and y axis but in general it can be any type of line now there are three types of reflection we can have we can have either reflection about the x-axis reflection about the y-axis or reflection about both x and y simultaneously or we can say reflection about the origin when you have both of them at the same time so let's consider the general form of a function let's say f of y is equal to f of x if you reflect this one over the y axis over this axis y then what you are in fact doing is to replace is replacing x with minus x meaning that the new y let's call it g becomes f of minus x so this means if you replace replace x with minus x in the equation this means that you're reflecting the graph over the y-axis meaning that if the graph let's say is a shape like this one then every point here is going to be reflected about the y-axis and then you're going to have a new shape there is another type of reflection if you do reflection about the x-axis which is this one in this in this case you are going to multiply the function by minus 1 so h of x becomes negative f of x this this time the graph is going to be reflected every point about the y-axis axis and you get let's say a shape you know in the fourth quadrant and the last one is when you do reflection about the y and then you do a reflection about the x in this case you're gonna combine the last two operations so if we get a new function i is going to be you multiply f by negative and then you change x to negative x so it's going to be negative f of negative x this as I said it's the same as saying reflection about the origin so if you have two simultaneous reflection on y and x is the same as reflection about the origin Knowing these three facts, we can find the equation for the reflected function and also we can just plot the function. So let's do a couple of examples here. The first example is saying that the function is square root of x plus 2. We are supposed to find an equation to represent each of the following reflections and then sketch the graph of the original function f of x and the new transformed function and then also we have to write the domain and range of the function the first function is h of x which is reflection in the y-axis remember we said when there is a reflection on the y we are going to replace x with minus x so we say h of x becomes square root of instead of x it becomes minus x plus 2 now to plot this function I'm going to use table of values the first function that I'm going to plot is the base function which is square root of x plus 2 I'm going to plot that one since x is under the square root and square root of negative numbers are, is not defined so I have to give x only positive or 
positive value or equal to zero. So my table of values becomes let's say x is zero, x is one, and x is four. If x is zero, square root of zero is zero plus two is two. If x is one, square root of one is one plus two is three. If x is four, square root of four is two plus two is four. So I am going to get a graph like the following. If x is zero, y is two. If x is one, y is three. If x is four, two, three, four, y is four, one, two, three, four. So I get a graph like this one. But if you look at the graph, you can see that the domain is any x in R and x has to be greater than or equal to zero because only these values are accepted. The range is y in R, a real number, and you can see that y is valid from this point up. So y greater than or equal to 2. So this is for the base function, square root of x plus 2. Now for the transform function, square root of negative x plus 2, we know that under the square root has to be positive, so negative x has to be greater than or equal to 0. If I multiply both sides by negative 1 to get rid of this negative, the inequality changes direction. So this becomes x less than or equal to 0 times negative 1 gives you 0. So I have to give only negative values or 0 to x. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to say x, y. If x is 0, if x is negative 1, or if x is negative 4. If x is 0, we get square root of negative 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. If x is negative 1, negative times negative 1 gives you positive 1. Square root of 1 is 1 plus 2 is 3. If x is negative 4, negative 4 times negative 1 gives us 4 square root of 4 is 2 plus 2 is 4 so let's plot it when x is 0 y is 2 the same point when x is negative 1 y is 3 which is this point when x is negative 4 2 3 4 y is 4 which is this point and you're going to get a graph like this one. And you can easily see that this graph, this one, is a reflection of this graph on the y-axis. Every point is reflected about the y-axis. Now, the domain and range of this function. You can see that x for the reflected graph goes to the left, meaning that the domain is x in R, and x has to be less than or equal to 0, and the range is y in R, and y has to be greater than the same value upward, greater than or equal to 2. In the next example, we have to find R of x. which is a reflection in the x-axis of the function f of x. Remember that when you have reflection on the x-axis, you are going to multiply your function by negative 1. So we are going to say r of x is negative f of x, which is negative square root of x minus 2. Now the question is that, Again, we have to plot this function. Remember from the previous example, the table of values for f of x was, again, I'm going to write it, 0, 1, 4, 
which is going to give you 2, 3, and 4. And again, if you plot this function, we are going to get a graph like this one. Now, for r of x, the table of values becomes the following. Remember that under the square root has to be positive and it's x, so it follows the same rule. It has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I can give the same value, 0, 1, 4. But now when x is 0, square root of 0 is 0. Negative 0 minus 2 is minus 2. If I give 1 to x, square root of 1 is 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And if I give 4, square root of 4 is 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And if I plot it, when x is 0, y is negative 2, which is here. When x is 1, let's say here, y is negative 3, which is here. When x is 4, y is negative 3, which is here, which is going to be something like this. Now, if you can see, it is e easily obvious that this graph is a reflection of the original graph on the x-axis. And you get the new graph. Now, the domain of the original graph, which is this one, as you remember, is x in r and x greater than or equal to 0, range was y in r and y greater than or equal to 2. Now, for the transformed function, the domain becomes still x in r and x has to be greater than 0 because everything to the right of the origin is valid and the range is y in r and if you look now, only y's, y values which are less than this point, and this point is negative 2, so y has to be less than or equal to negative 2. That's going to be our new range. In the next, next example, we have to find s of x, which is reflection in the y-axis and then a reflection in the x-axis. So let's say s, s of x is going to be a reflection in the y-axis so this means x becomes negative x and then a reflection on the x-axis so you multiply s of x by negative 1. So you get negative square root of negative x minus 2. This is our new function. Now, we are supposed to graph it and then find the domain and range. Again, if you remember, the table of value for f of x was 0, 1, and 4. And then we said is 2. 3 and 4. Now the new table of values for s of x, we have to first decide what values the function is valid. Since negative x is under square root and it has to be positive, we know that x has to be less than or equal to 0, so we can assign values like negative 4, negative 1, and 0. So if x is negative 4, then negative negative is positive, square root of positive 4 is 2, negative 2 minus 2 is minus 4. If x is negative 1, negative times negative 1 is positive 1, square root of 1 is 1, minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. If x is 0, square root of negative 1 times 0 is square root of 0, which is 0. And then this one is going to give me negative 2. Now let's plot this one. For the original one, when x is 0 is 0, when x is 1, y is 3, when x is 4, y 
y is 4 when x is 0 is 2 that's a mistake so we're gonna get a graph like this one for the original one for the transform one when x is negative 4 so 1 2 3 4 negative 4 y is negative 4 1 2 3 4 when x is negative 1, y is negative 3, so we get this one. When x is 0, y is negative 2, which is this one. So we get a graph like this one. And this is a reflection on the x and then the y. Remember, if I have this original graph and I reflect it on the y-axis, I get something like this one. If I reflect this one about the x-axis, I'm going to get this guy. Now, there are points on the graph, the original graph, when you do reflection on the x and on the y, they do not change under any transformation. These points are called invariant. Now, what are the invariant points? Are the points that the x or y coordinate is equal to zero. For instance, this point, when it's reflected about the y-axis, is not going to change because the reflection is about the y, meaning that x becomes <coughs> negative x. This means that if the x value of the point is 0, it becomes negative 0, which is the same as 0. So it doesn't change. Or if you do reflection about the x-axis, we know that in this case, y becomes negative y. So if the y value of a point is 0, the negative 0 becomes 0, nothing changes. So this means that that point is invariant under that reflection. So remember what exactly invariant means. When a point does not change under the reflection. And those points are the points which they have x or y coordinate equal to zero. Now, the last part of this example is to find the domain and range of this new transformed function. Now if you look at this we can see that the domain is x in R and x has to be less than or equal to 0 because for this function everything to the left is valid for x and the range is y in R and everything which is less than or equal to negative 2 so we say y less than or equal to negative 2 in this example we have been given two graphs and we have to describe the reflection that transforms f of x into g of x First, f of x is this one, and g of x is this one. We can easily see that g of x is a reflection of f of x on the x-axis. The other thing that you have to remember is these two points. You can see that, for instance, for this point, the coordinate is negative 3 and 0 for this point the coordinate is negative 7 and 0 now when you do a reflection on the x-axis remember that y changes to minus y you s multiply the function by negative 1 but if you look at the y coordinate of the points you can see that both of them are 0 so this means that 0 becomes negative 0, which is the same, so nothing changes about these two points, and these two points are invariant. The next example is the function f of x and g of x given here. 
and you have to find out what type of transformations is, per is performed uh, we can easily see that g of x is the reflection of f of x on the y-axis and then another reflection on the x-axis to get g of x to give you one example is that let's look at this point this point the coordinate is 4 and 2 now let's look at this point which is the reflection of the, the original point the next point is going to be negative 4 and negative 2 you can see that x has changed to negative 4 4 has changed to negative 4 so this means a reflection on the y-axis and then 2 is changed to negative 2 so this is a reflection on the x-axis so we have two reflection right after the, the other one or you can say easily a reflection about the origin this point goes to this point and so forth you can find you know how each point is going to be transformed or reflected about the origin now.